it recording has started am i are you still able to see my screen yes well you need to put it full screen this is perfect okay so i can't see the time <laughs> okay it's actually we're on the hour so let's get started yes let's go all right. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Jenkins Google Summer of Code 2022 Jenkins Online Meetup. This is our um, coding phase one midterm demo and um, status update from GSOC contributors. About Jenkins Online Meetup. So this is a virtual meetup group. We're in, it's intended for users and developers around the world. Um, the aim of this group is to conduct regular online webinars um, about all things Jenkins. So we are always looking for Jenkins stories, how to's, best practices. And if you're interested in being a speaker, please reach out to us on the Advocacy and Outreach Gitter channel. If you have questions throughout today's webinar, please put it in the chat window. Our speakers will get to it after their presentation or um, if, if can be, our mentors will be online to help answer the question uh, during the presentation as well. You can also find us on Gitter and Jenkins Discourse after this event. And I also like to highlight that the code of conduct applies here. So if there's um, any questions about it, it's be basically being nice and being respectful to one another. On the agenda, we will quickly go over what GSOC is and what Jenkins in GSOC is. And then we'll go straight right into the project demos and um, presentation by our GSOC contributors. So what is Google Summer of Code? So Google Summer of Code is a global online program focused on bringing new contributors into the open source software development space. Um, GSOC contributors work with an open source organization. In this case, it's Jenkins. And they spend about 12 plus weeks uh, programming projects under the guidance of mentors. This is our six years participating in um, GSOC. And we have four project ideas, which our GSOC contributors will now provide you with a, um, what it, it's all about, how they progress on it. And um, let's go dive right into it. So Jean-Marc. Yes, okay. Welcome everybody uh, online or listening to that uh, recording. So I'm very pleased with the org admin team to have the presentation of the various projects uh, that are um, participating to this edition of Google Summer of Code. So next slide, we're going to start immediately with the first presentation from uh, Yiming about Jenkins file runner action for GitHub actions. Yiming, the floor is yours. Okay, uh, let me share my screen. Uh, this one. Okay. Let me see. Just make it full screen there. Okay, let's start. So, hello everyone. My name is Yiming. I'm the Jenkins GSOC contributor of Jenkins File Runner as GitHub Actions this summer. So, I'm honored to give the midterm presentation today about this project. I'd like to give a brief introduction about myself first. Uh, I'm a graduate student from Carnegie Mellon University. My major is like electrical and computer engineering. I'm a newbie in the Jenkins open source community. Uh, and I'm grateful that Jenkins can give me the opportunity to, to realize the idea in this project. So uh, Jenkins file runner action for GitHub Actions provides the customized containerized environment and used for GitHub Actions for users to run the Jenkins pipeline inside the GitHub Actions. So in more detail, if you're using these actions, any GitHub project 
which has a Jenkins file can execute its workflow in the GitHub Actions runner. It aims at applying Jenkins in the GitHub Actions in a function as a service context. This feature is based on the Jenkins file runner, which is a command line tool for the Jenkins pipeline execution engine. So look at the uh, picture. Here is a, a basic architecture of these actions. So I combine the Jenkins core, a minimum required set of plugins to run the pipeline, uh, plugin installation manager and the Jenkins file runner into a base images. Uh, and then I set up the entry point cell, shell scripts to start up the container workflow. So uh, how can you use our actions? I, uh, I provide two Jenkins file runner actions in my project now. Uh, one is called a JFR container action and another one is called JFR static image action. You can access them in your GitHub action workflow definition by using the following URL. Oh, as you see in these high level diagrams, uh, they are similar with other GitHub actions. The basic example is using actions to check out to set up the workspace and using our Jenkins file running actions to run the Jenkins pipeline. It is pretty simple. So as I provide to uh, actions now. So there are some subtle differences in our actions. Uh, so the root cause of these differences is the starting time of the Jenkins container. In JFR container action, the Jenkins container starts up before all GitHub actions execution and ends after all GitHub actions have results. So all GitHub actions will have influences on, on the container. This means you can use other actions in the marketplace to set up the environment as well. Uh, so in JFR static image action, the Jenkins container postpones the starting time. It will start up right before the JFR static image action starts and end right after the JFR static image action ends. Uh, in this case, the Jenkins working working container has strong isolation with the host machine. So users cannot use other actions to set up the container environment, except actions checkout. So, so actions checkout has higher, has higher native support by GitHub actions. So look at our basic function interfaces. Our function interface is pretty simple. You only need to point out the running options and the relative paths of Jenkins file, JCS, YAM file, and the plugin installation list file in your repository. So the command means the how you want to run the Jenkins file runner. The default command is run, and uh, another support one is linked. And the uh, Jenkins file uh, input means the relative path to your to the Jenkins file in your repository. The default command is Jenkins file. And uh, the third one is plugins txt. Uh, it means the relative path to plugins list file in your repository. And the final one is JCSC. It means the relative path to Jenkins configuration as code yum file. So as some people might not be familiar with the tool in our actions, I listed some basic commands about them. Basically, we use the plugin installation manager to install the plugins specified by plugins installation list file and the Jenkins file runner to run the Jenkins pipeline. So after some explanations about these actions, I want to share some demos for you so you can apply them into your GitHub uh, workflow definitions. Uh, I already added some hyperlinks so you can click them. Uh, so these demos aim, aim at applying Jenkins a real FAS context. So the one time used Jenkins controller won't store anything in the file system. 
So the first one is uh, integrating Actions Cache to cache installed plugins. So Actions Cache is a is a kind is a very popular action to cache your dependencies, which is provided in the GitHub Action Marketplace. Uh, by default, the plugins sp specified by plugins.txt will be downloaded from the internet every time you run the workflow. In order to accelerate the workflow, you can use Actions Cache outside and give its cache heat status as input in, uh, in its plugin cache heat. So one thing to note is that this feature is only available in JFR container action because in another action, you are not allowed to integrate uh, other GitHub actions with, uh, with, the Jenkins, with the Jenkins file runner actions. So next one. So the second one is about uploading your pipeline log to GitHub action pages by integrating actions upload artifact. Uh, so as you can see, after these two actions end, they will uh, leave the pipeline logs in your workspace, uh, which you can access. So you can use the action up, upload artifact action to upload your logs in this path. So as you can see, uh, so as you can see, you can, uh, the only difference is the path of the pipeline logs. The, this one has, let me see. So you can download or delete uh, those artifacts in the related GitHub action pages. You can see the, the archi artifacts uh, on the downside. So the following examples are still in progress, but their experiments are, su are successful. So you can play with them. And you can actually, you can directly copy the Jenkins file or JCSC config configuration. Uh, I'll put them in the official demo pages later. The third demo uh, example is caching the Maven dependencies by integrating Jenkins dropper, drop cacher plugin. So this, this one is pretty similar to the, to the function of actions, actions cache. So the difference is, is that uh, this one used the Jenkins plugin. Uh, in this case, I used AWS S3 as an example but you can use any similar uh, object storage uh, services. Firstly, you can set up the cache in the Jenkins file and uh, validate the cache freshness by specified key. So for example, if it, if it is a Maven project, you can cache your Maven dependencies by, poem dot, by, by your poem. Uh, then what it, then what you need to do is installing job cacher plugins specified by plugins.txt, uh, configuring the AWS S access key and the S3 storage path in the JCSC file, uh, and then declaring your AWS key as environmental variables in the workflow definition. Uh, you can also find the example in the link. So the next example is uh, uploading, uploading the artifacts to AWS S3 by integrating Jenkins Artifact Manager S3 plugin. Uh, so this, this the function of this demo is pretty similar to the, to the um, actions upload artifact, but you can use your own um, cloud services uh, as you can see, the steps are pretty similar to the previous example. All you need to do is managing the artifacts uh, in the Jenkins file, um, configuring the AWS access key and uh, some related storage path in the JCSC file, and then declaring the environmental variables in the GitHub workflow definition. 
And the final example is about triggering the building at another permanent Jenkins agents. So I think this demo is pretty interesting because sometimes you might need to collect the results from different agent buildings because um, maybe sometimes you don't, you don't want to only build the results in, a, in, in only one machine. You might need to use another agent to build your job again to see the differences. Oh, it's just my guess. So the previous example only gives the single agent example, but you can integrate with this one. Firstly, you need to create the Docker agent in your machine. And uh, remember to set up uh, the related security policies accordingly. So if you don't know how to set up the Docker agent, you can click the link at, mm, below. Uh, I think it is specified in the PPT URL. Uh, then you need to call the different agents in your, to, to process your building steps in the Jenkins file. Finally, you need to set up the agents uh, in the JCSC file and declare your, declare your uh, machine access key and the public DNS name as environment variables in the workflow definition. So the Jenkins file, so the Jenkins uh, file can uh, use the SSH remote control to access the uh, the another permanent agent. Uh, let me see. So I also give some JCSC uh, example here. You can directly copy. So in our project, the command line I have to clear. Uh, declared that, clarified that uh, the command line Jenkins pipeline execution engine is powered by the Jenkins file runner project and the plugin installation part is powered by the plugin installation manager. So, so thanks this project, I built on, I built my project on, on them. So that's it. Thanks for listening. Thank you very much, uh, Yiming, for this, this very interesting presentation. I see that you've done quite some work experimenting different techniques and the potential of it. Thank you very much. Just checking in the Q&A. OK. Uh, uh, no, that's not the right button here. No question in the Q&A. So back to the mainstream presentation. So the next one is the plugin health scoring system with uh, Diraj. Diraj, the floor is yours now. Thank you. So I'll now share my screen. So you might be able to see the screen, right? The front page. Perfect. Awesome. So let's move forward. So this project is called Plugin Health Scoring System. And uh, myself, Deeraj and Jodha, and my mentors are Adrian, Jake, and Aditya. So with their help, we were able to do a lot of work on this. So let me present you how the project looks like so far. So this is the agenda. We're going to talk about what the project is about. Then we will be going to a demo. Then we'll be, then I'll be talking about what did I learn? And then there's going to be some discussion on what is next for this project. And then there's going to be some question and answers if there's any. Now, the Jenkins community, as we know, has around 1800 plus plugins. That's a lot. So if you think about all of them, not each and every plugin is at the same maturity level, right? Some might be like at the up utmost bar that we have for a plugin maturity. Some might not be at that level. So there's like some dis, uh, you know, there's disparities between them. So, so what we need is there has to be a system in place which tells us what exactly is a position for a given plugin in this maturity level aspect of first perspective. So we are aiming to do that by putting a score, a numeric score on a given plugin. So that score is going to tell you how mature a plugin is. So that is what we are trying to do with this. So in simple words, we are just going to rate a plugin. 
it's going to help the users it's going to help the the you know maintainers of the plugin it's also going to help the contributors the new contributors who are interested to come and contribute to the jenkins ecosystem right so having said that let's just quickly jump into a, a demo and i think you should be able to see the intellij screen right my id are you able to see the ide screen yes yes awesome awesome thanks a lot so we would be implementing and running this project and uh, just before that this is how the readme file of our project looks like so i'll be following these simple commands that we have here to set up and keep the project running so going back to the intellij i'll be running this command called maven package and we'll be skipping the tests okay it's going to generate the jar file for us and then we'll be running the docker compose up command to start the services so talking about services we have two of them here this is the java project service and this one is service related to our postgres so both of them work together in parallel and now you can see we have a message called started plugin health scoring so both the services are running right now so you should not believe me so i'll show you they are really started they have really started so let me go and click on this connection button so what we are doing right now is trying to connect with the database that we have just started with the help of docker compose up command right so we have set up a connection by for filling up some details and now i'll be running some queries to query what's inside the database so there's basically one table called plugins and if i query it you can see these are the fields that it has and if i query it and arrange the document uh, i mean the columns it would look like this so i just wanted to organize them well so this is how it looks like we have for a given plugin we have its name it have we have its scm url we have its release timestamp and we also have a, a an object called a json object which is named as details all right so this detail is fetched from the jenkins update center which is hosted and it's available for everyone to view now there's a very good thing about this database that we can do right now that is you can see some of the fields in the scm column are missing any value so that means they do not have any valid scm assigned to them now we can query and find out how many of the plugins in the uh, are there which do not have valid uh, scm at all so uh, if i run this query last one it says that there are 52 of them so this is one of the data inside that we got with the help of this database in place moving forward we are going to have lots of very important details inside this database so that we can run very specific queries to find out what's going on on the whole plugins as a whole right so that is how this is going to look like as we move forward having said that uh let me quickly show you the flow the how, how the code looks like not going too much into detail so this is where the this is the import plugin CR, crl uh, clr file where it all starts so we are uh, calling this method called read update center as its name symbolizes it's it's reading the update center and uh, we are using this update center url to access it and then we are using jackson's uh, object mapper api to read the values and then we have these specific records in place all right so these records are written by us so that it tells jackson what exactly do we want to fetch from the json object that we have from update center so we are fetching fetching plugins and uh, deprecations and for them we have these two other records to tell them exactly what do we need in both of these entries that we are fetching so that's how it looks like and moving back we are then storing those results it actually it actually returns list of plugins then we are storing them in the database using this save or update method which just calls uh, plugin repository dot save method so that's how it looks like this is the first and like the main important flow of the project now moving back to our slide now that we are done with the demo these are the key details that we have getting the plugin list and storing them into the database and then we have this open structure to record details so as i told you we have uh, the details 
column which was storing json object so it so it has json object because that way it's flexible in future we might have different different plugins their details can be stored inside that json object as per however their properties are so that's a very conscious decision that we have taken now these are, this list can go on and on but i've put in this few of them so what did i learn so since we have a ci in place for our system uh, for the project whenever we run the ci uh, starts working and we have some integration tests as well so all of them are run across uh, around the new contribution that we have let's say a pr so it builds up and runs the integration tests on it check whether it, it is up to the mark or not it, whether it, it's failing something or not and if it is failing we would have some reports some spot bucks reports some uh, check style reports so there's these are the things that i learned and writing best practices and clean code so this so these were able to help me you know with this project so far so let me talk to you about the next step what do we have next for this project now we are working on designing the probe engine and this probe engine is going to determine and it's going to store the logic for each and every probe like how it works and how is it helping to you know analyze a plugins repository let's say so that's going to be our probe engine and then we're going to be using a process which will apply the weights uh, of the uh, weights to this probe values to generate the final health score that we are looking for and that final health score is going to be uh, delivered uh, via a json file uh, just like how update center file is being hosted and using that json file it will be rendered uh, the scores will be taken from that json file and that score is going to be rendered on the ui of let's say plugin site or jenkins plugin manager it's a it's a uh, it's this is a decision we need to take far in future so uh, so this is how the plan looks like and uh, if you want you can check out these resources to know more about it it contains everything and uh, yes so if you have any questions let's let's address them there there is one question that appeared somewhere i don't know if it's in q and a or so a very intriguing uh, decision and uh, 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 to store the information about the plugin health as a JSON uh, field. What were the arguments for and against? What were the alternative uh, options for that field? Sure. So I can try answering a few words on this question. then i'll pass it to adrian who can share more lights on that so we chose json because when we talk about details as the name of the column suggests we don't know what details a plugin might have because each plugin has different properties right it might not be in gradle project some might be a maven project so there are some differences between them so we need to have something in place which is flexible enough for us to store anything depending on the plugins properties right so that's one thing and uh, i think i'll then pass it on to adrian if he wants to add anything else adrian yeah, go ahead uh, yeah can, can you hear me yes loud and clear okay so um that's a very good question the idea of having a, a colon by uh, in the database a colon by a uh, pub uh could have been um a solution uh i i quite exploited it. I, I went through, uh, I went to a, a JSON colon because I wanted to be uh, more flexible, not having to restructure the uh, the, the table each time we inc we add, uh, we create a new probe. I wanted to have one, one colon uh, that would be able to hold all the probe results. And also uh, to uh, be mindful that not all the probs, like uh, Dihar said, uh, will be applied to every one of the plugins. For example, we can have we have in mind that uh, maybe some uh, we will have a prob that will determine if a plugin is using a Jenkins file or not. And then we can have a, a, a secondary uh, prob uh, saying if the plugin is using a Jenkins file, uh, is it using a custom 
uh, is it using a custom build instruction or is it using the uh, recommended uh, co uh, build uh, configuration from the uh, from uh, from the infra team and then we can see that some probs won't be up, uh, we won't apply that secondary uh, prob to plugins that don't have a Jenkins file. And so we would have a lot of um, colon that won't have any data or usable data. And also the 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 the, the prob uh, the the prob result um, mm -hmm. is something a bit more complex than just uh, uh, keeping the uh, 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 then to use a, a varchar colon, for example, on yeah. uh, for each one of the prob. So that's why I uh, I went to uh, JSON. In the end, maybe we could have uh, used a no NoSQL uh, database entirely uh, because of uh, the the main data point of of the project will be stored in a NoSQL kind of uh, uh, colon. Uh, but uh, uh, after discussing with the infra team, then they have knowledge about uh, PostgreSQL. Uh, they uh, have a way to provide it uh, easily uh, on, on their cluster, um, and they have uh, they, they know how to manage uh, that kind of database. Uh, and I I know that the JSON um, uh, data type on PostgreSQL is also quite performant. You can have um, uh, a good index on that uh, data. So even even though you uh, the the query system might not be as easy uh, with uh, JPA and and stuff like that as with others, it's totally feasible to have custom queries uh, with uh, a, a either um, 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 uh, functions from the, from uh, from uh, PostgreSQL or direct language uh, uh, syntax to query uh, to to query JSON objects. So this this is why uh, I I I wanted to to go uh, to uh, JSON uh, to a JSON colon. Uh, in the end, uh, the way the, the way we are storing the data in the database is not uh, strictly. Um, the, the core pro, the, the core product of, of that project uh, we mm -hmm. will be able to of course um, review that in, in in six months one year if we want to change uh, that might be difficult but again the the uh, the database is not keeping um, data for the long term it's something we can for sure analyze uh, reanalyze the update center and all the plugins uh, from scratch uh, when we want, so we won't have to any... reload it. Yeah, we, we can have. We don't. We I don't see any problem having to uh, start from scratch if we want to go to a, a NoSQL or to a, a, a colon. But I I, I foresee sure. more uh, data structure issues with uh, having um, a colon based uh, uh, result storing system. Thank you very much, Adrian, for, for this very uh, uh, detailed explanation. I, I think there has been a lot of thought uh, into uh, taking that decision. Uh, very, very interesting. I'm looking forward uh, to see the, the results of that and uh, how it progresses. There was another question. Uh, this one is for Diraj. We're a little bit running out of time, but the question was here. Uh, do we have already something to share about the different probes that will be used to uh, decide what is a mature plugin and uh, how this will be measured, consolidated? Do we have already a good view on that? I don't forget to remind about the survey going on. Yes. <laughs> Go ahead, Dirash. Yes. So we do have a survey going on to find out the weights for the mm, different different probes that we are planning to have. So to answer the question, do we have anything just now? Uh, I would not say anything that's working probe right now. Uh, but moving forward, let me give you an example of a probe. Let's say uh, one probe can be does the given plugin has Jenkins file or not. That's one probe. So we can, and to give you, uh, to answer like, how are you going to do that? It's just uh, going to the repository of plugin and checking the presence of a Jenkins file or not. 
so that can be one another can be just trying to find out whether the given plugin has the recommended jenkins base version or not that can be another probe so we are going to have these list of probes and there's going to be specific uh functions that are going to you know address those probes like scraping the repository and the form xml file and checking up what's the version is is it matching with the recommended version or not if not then that means the probe is, the, is not passing so based on the weight that the probe has we will be uh, assigning a score for that probe and basically this is going to be happening for each of the probe and combining all of these probes values we would be having the final health score so okay. was i able to Great. answer yeah great i'm i'm watchful in looking at the watch so that we keep yes. uh, uh, uh this this uh, this meeting uh on rail thank you very much for this this uh, explanation two things there that i uh, i uh, take away of it is first we're building for the future and to be able to refactor uh what we're working on in the database design in the probe design this is work in progress and just the start of the story uh, that we are writing there. Uh, there will be details uh, maybe on the on the meetup page or elsewhere on the various channels where the survey is. Uh, don't hesitate to give your opinion what is for you, what makes a trustable and healthy plugin and what not. We're listening, listening to the community. Diraz, thank you very much for this very interesting uh, presentation and some uh, um, interesting challenges that you're you're facing in this project. So, thank you. Well done. Thank so you. So let's walk to the next presentation, and we're going to listen to uh, Hushi Cash, who is going to explain us his work uh, about uh, automatic gift caching. The floor is Hello. yours. Oh, can you see my screen? Yes, perfect. Okay. Go ahead. Let's get started. Yeah. So, hello everyone. It's indeed my pleasure to be amidst to you all. Today, I'm going to present you my work on automatic Git cache maintenance, GSOC 2022. So here we go. Before we get started, I'll take a few moments to introduce myself. I am Rishikesh Rao, and I belong to the land of unity and diversity, that is India. Currently, I'm pursuing my third year engineering in computer science. My hobbies are coding, gaming, and watching movies. The things that interest me the most and keeps me occupied are blockchain, distributed systems, and system design. Let's have a glimpse of the components of today's presentation, that is, from where it all started and how it's currently progressing. Git is the most widely used version control tool. Many of us use it in our day-to-day -day lives. Any changes made in our project are stored using a blob, a tree, and a commit, which are known as Git objects. As the software progresses through its development life cycle, the increase in the number of commits is directly proportional to the Git directory. The increase in the size directly affects the performance of the Git commands if not maintained properly. An unoptimized repository mainly contains many loose objects, no commit graph, inefficient search of data, and packed files. My project Automatic, my project is automatic Git cache maintenance. It means I'll have to optimize the Git caches on the Jenkins controller. What exactly are caches? Caches are directories on the Jenkins controller. They are created by the Git, they are created by the Git plugin when Jenkins job is configured, typically a multi-branch pipeline. Each cache contains a bare Git repository. A bare Git repository is a clone of the original repository, but only contains the Git folder. Multi-branch pipelines 
often include many branches, which results in the checkout of the same Git directory multiple times. To avoid this duplication, caches are used. What are the advantages of caches? As caches only contains the Git directory, it reduces the network IO and the local disk usage. The disadvantages, currently in the Git plugin, there is no way of periodically maintaining the Git caches. The caches has to be maintained manually using a script. Hence, the caches remains unoptimized. Hmm, is there a fix to this? Yes, there is. In Git version 2.3.0, Git developers introduced a new API, that is the Git maintenance API. The API comprises of various tasks. Each task has its own speciality. The aim of my project is to integrate this API into the Git plugin and the Git client plugin. The integration of maintenance API provides a mechanism for administrators to periodically schedule maintenance tasks using cron syntax on Jenkins controller. Few maintenance tasks such as GC, commit graph were implemented in older versions. We support Git versions up to 1.8, which was released all the way back in 2013. So let me show you a glimpse of my uh, demo, like my project. Oh. So can you see the terminal on my screen? Yes, maybe. Uh, is it easy for you to make it a little bit bigger? Although, oh wait, I don't. Okay, don't try it. Okay. Follow I'm your I'm not flow. sure how. Yeah, I'm not sure how. No. So, okay, go ahead. Yeah. So, what are caches? Uh, caches is a directory present on Jenkins. So, if I move go into the caches directory, you will find Git repositories. These are bare Git repositories. So, if I move into a Git uh, direct, uh, if I move into a cache, you will see it only contains a Git repository. The Git client plugin and the Git, uh, these caches are unoptimized uh, caches right now. We can look, uh, we can uh, look, uh, we can say that they are unoptimized by looking into the objects folder. So if I see the into the objects folder, you can see so many directories present in them. Each directory contains various files. They are known as Git objects. So if I, these are the various Git objects present in, inside your, uh, inside the Git caches. Uh, so e each Git object can be a tree, a commit, uh, or a blob. So let's see how much space does this uh, directory take. Okay, this directory takes around 127 MB. Can we do better? Can we optimize this? Can we reduce the space this directory takes? Let's try it out by running the Git cache maintenance on Jenkins. So let me start the project Jenkins software by running this command. This command uh, compiles, builds, and you know, yeah, starts the software. So yeah, I think the project is up and running. So it's running on localhost 8080 slash Jenkins. So this is the Jenkins UI. And if you click on the manage Jenkins uh, section, you will be, uh, you will see a Git maintenance system configuration. When you click on the uh, Git maintenance system configuration, you will see the UI. So the UI is not that good right now. So I, I'll have to improvise on that. So bear with me. Uh, the current Git version is uh, the current Git version on my computer, which is being used to run the maintenance task, 
is 2.37.1. Uh, in this demonstration, I'm going to explain to, uh, you know, go through two maintenance tasks, that is the commit graph and the loose objects. So I'm going to schedule a commit graph every minute. Okay. So uh, every two minutes. So um, yeah, this command schedules a commit graph every two minutes. We'll schedule a prefetch every hour. Uh, we'll schedule a GC every week. It is recommended to use GC with care because it, it takes a lot of time to run. Lose objects, let's schedule it every minute. And, okay, so Jenkins, uh, it is recommended not to you schedule any task every minute as it is resource intensive. So this is a warning, but uh, let's do it for the sake of this demonstration. And incremental repack, let me uh, run it every 61 minutes. Okay, wait, what, 61 minutes? Jenkins is throwing an error. So you can't schedule everything, uh, maintenance tasks for 61 minutes. So let's let's uh, change it to daily. Oh, is that daily. Yeah, so Jenkins is happy. Let's save the data. And yeah, it has been saved successfully. We can look at it by looking into the logs. So, there is a log system log and the git maintenance so yeah the data has been saved successfully we can also confirm it by looking into the uh, by looking into the xml file present in jenkins so i can see it by you know jenkins.plugins so this is the data which has been stored successfully in jenkins each maintenance task along with its cron, cron syntax and whether it's configured or not. So let's start, uh, bef yeah, before clicking on the execute button, the execute button schedules the maintenance task. So before scheduling the maintenance task, let's try watching whether this maintenance task has any effect or not. So we'll go into the caches directory. We'll go into the git client plugin. And we'll try watching, we'll try watching into the info directory. Okay. So right now there is nothing other than an exclude file. So let's try uh, scheduling these maintenance tasks. Okay. The maintenance task has been scheduled. Let's look at the logs. The maintenance tasks are scheduled for execution. How does this work internally? Internally, every minute, Jenkins checks whether this uh, cron syntax is a valid cron syntax or not. If it is valid, it is scheduled for execution. That is, it, it uh, takes that maintenance task and runs it on all the caches. So let's refresh this page. Yeah, as you can see, the commit graph has been added to a maintenance queue and loose objects has well been added to the maintenance queue because the cron syntax states to run it every even minute, eventh minute. So two, four, six, eight. So currently on my computer, it's nine, 18. So that's why uh, the loose object has been added to the maintenance queue. So the maintenance task, uh, currently the commit graph maintenance task is being run. So let me refresh. Yeah, the commit graph maintenance has been run successfully. Let's look into this uh, folder. Okay, wait. Hmm. Okay. Oops. Something nice. unexpected. Yeah, something unexpected. One minute, let me look into it. It's never a good omen if a demo works immediately. Okay. So I'm looking so, forward for the final. So, uh, Hoshi Cash, okay. I don't want to pressure you uh, there, but you have two more minutes to the max. To okay. Uh, okay. So, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll try ending this demonstration by, uh, you know, talking about this comment graph. 
So if you look at the commit graph command, you, you will find two commit graphs which has been created due to this command. So now if I, let's try looking at the performance optimizations we have gained. So if I run this command, which you know disables the commit graph and tries running the log, uh, git log command to get the latest 20 commits. Okay. It takes around zero. Okay, wait. There is there are things going wrong on my side. So don't worry. Don't worry. Okay. Okay, uh, one minute. So if I go into this directory and go into the info directory, yeah, into the commit graph. And now let me try the same command. Okay, I think it should work. Yeah, this command, as the commit graph file is turned off, so it is taking some time to get the last, last the latest 20 commits. So I think it would take around 10 seconds to, you know, get all the latest commits, like to execute this command. Yeah, so as you can see, it has taken 16, 16 16.895. So let's try running this thing using the commit graph turned on. Wow, it has taken 0.025 seconds. That is around 600 times optimized. So yeah, that, that is one performance gain which we have seen using a commit graph. And one more thing I want to show is, whoa, where are these directories present on my Git plugin, on, on my caches? All of them have been banished. And what exactly is the uh, size of this directory? 8.1 MB. Before it was around 128 MB and now it is an 8.1 MB. So you can see the directory has been compressed by around 15 times. So uh, there are various maintenance tasks as well, but as we are running out of time, I think I would, yeah, stop. This, uh, is, this is an impressive way of doing maintenance and a nice way to conclude your presentation, Hoshi Cash. That was impressive. Thank yeah. you very much. This was a very interesting uh, presentation, very lively. And you dare to do a full demo of your product. So congratulations uh, for that. I'm sorry to rush you a little bit. I just would like now to give the word to uh, Vian for the, uh, the, the next presentation. Vian, the floor is yours now. Hello, everyone. It's great to be here and I'll start in a moment once I share my screen. So I am doing the project um, for a pipeline steps documentation generator and my mentors are Kristen and Harshit. Uh, I'll start by giving a brief context about my project. What is it about? So pipeline steps documentation generator is a tool that generates step documentation for our pipeline steps reference page. Um, what, what it exactly does is it queries all the Jenkins plugins for the documentation of steps, formats it as an ASCII doc, and then feeds it into Jenkins.io. And that way the users can see the entire steps documentation at a single place and then uh, use it the way they want. Now we come behind the rash and behind this project. Why this project is important. As of now, we can find around 600 plugins on the pipeline steps reference page. And these plugins provide us more than 1500 steps. And if we dig further, these steps have several parameters which have their own hierarchy, own help text. And this makes the entire documentation enormous. Um, user feedback, there has been a lot of feedback about this page and it suggests that it's not very easy to find a particular piece of information amongst this documentation. For instance, uh, if we look at uh, a pipeline multi-branch plugin page and look at the ASCII doc for that, it comes out to be around 150,000 line long ASCII doc. And that is not good for the developer or the user. Both of them uh, will find it very hard to deal with it. Even the loading speed of that uh, the page becomes quite low. So we'll have to deal with that, right? And whilst we are finding solutions for these, 
we also came up with some additional uh, improvements that were not initially a part of the problem statement, but we thought could be beneficial for the website. So I'll start with the work that I've done under GSOC 2022. Um, firstly, the things that I did under the community bonding period. So like everyone, I spent some time studying the code base of Jenkins.io and the uh, PSDG repository. These two repositories were the main repositories of my project's concern. Then I created a pull request on Jenkins.io to fix an app bar bug. And this actually led me into understanding the CSS and the layouts uh, that are being uh, that are working on Jenkins.io and helped me work towards my first pull request. And then um, as my mentor Christian suggested, it's better to create an epic on Jenkins Jira to keep our work organized. And this really gave me a corporate type of feel to get the project organized. And I listed all the tasks under that story and it's working out really well for us. And then finally I designed some wireframes uh, for the UI, the layout part uh, to get some feedback of the community so that they can understand what I'm talking about and uh, get the idea on paper. So let's uh, begin with coding phase one. Uh, the first improvement that I did was change the sidebar scrolling behavior. So this was a completely UI based uh, change. Um, so before uh, the sidebar uh, scrolled along with the content. So let me just move on to that page. So this was the uh, UI that was present earlier for the Jenkins documentation sidebar. And as you can see, the sidebar scrolls along with the main content. So in, if someone wants to scroll down and then they want to shift towards a different page, they'll have to scroll back up or maybe just press the home button. And then they can see the sidebar and uh, they can click the link that they want to. But this is not an effective way to you know, uh, work with the things uh, parallelly. You'll need to have uh, both of them together. And that is the standard convention that is followed by most of the documentation nowadays. So uh, I went ahead and did that. And now the updated look is something like this. So both the uh, content and the sidebar have independent scrolling. You can scroll uh, one of them, the other one will stay stationary. And if your screen is smaller than the height of the sidebar, the sidebar can itself scroll. And in this way, you can scroll, uh, you can navigate through your entire content. And the major change about this was this has been uh, affected, affecting the entire Jenkins documentation, the user documentation. So not only pipeline steps reference, but the entire documentation uh, was uh, could get the benefit of this change. Moving on to the next change, um, the presentation. So these are the things that I mentioned. Um, the second thing that I proposed using the wireframes was listing the plugins in the pipeline steps reference. So what I meant by that was to, in fact, list all these headings that you see over here inside a sidebar so that the user can actually uh, see what all plugins are there and then click on any one of them to find their individual pages. But after I implemented them, we found out that it might not be very useful um, for the users to, in fact, use this change. And um, the page was becoming more crowded and we felt that it was uh, dragging us down more it could ben more than it could benefit us so from some co the community's feedback we found out that uh, including a search filter for that would be much better and that would be the way to go so we scrapped that uh, change of five, the uh, listing plugins and then we moved on towards working on our search filter and that search filter was more successful and it was uh, the change itself was much more effective than the list could ever be uh, so I'll show you what I mean by that. Um, for example, if I want to search about Git, um, so user just wants to see what all the steps or plugins have Git in it, just as an example. And as you can see over here, the page has 101 search results for that. And for example, if you want to toggle between them, here in one line, you have two places where the Git is present. And basically you'll have to no navigate a lot in order to see all the search results. And seeing the relevant results at one place is not possible with this method. But with a new search filter that I've created, it's very simple. You can just type in Git over here and you will immediately see only the results that have the keyword Git in it. So maybe the plugins or the steps. So for example, this step has a word Git in it, uh, but the plugin doesn't. So it, the plugin shows anyways so that you can at least see what plugin it is coming from but it's not the other way around. So if a plugin mentions the word Git in it, uh, the steps won't be showed and only the plugin will be showed. So for example, if I type SCM step over here, 
it will just show me the plugin and not the steps that come along with it. So this gives us a very minimal, uh, minimal data on every page. And this essentially makes it very easy for the user to filter out the data that they want to see. So this was the search filter improvement that I did. Moving on to the next one. So I've linked all these pages in the before and after section if the if anyone wants to see the, these uh, previews. So the after is basically the Jenkins.io website since all these changes are merged and uh, are live. And the before are some previews deployed on Netlify. Um, the next change was separating the de declarative steps from the main class. Uh, so what happens is um, there's generation of declarative steps is separate from the generation of the scripted steps of the pipeline. And because of that, we felt that it would be uh, useful for the developer to see these two as a separate class. So why not separate the declarative steps in a separate class and then use it inside our pipeline step extract the main class uh, in the way that we want to. So this would make a make it much easier to refine or restructure the step the way in which the declarative steps are generated. And currently uh, they are present only in the declarative heading on this page. So if you want to remove them in the future or maybe uh, put them at a separate uh, page itself, it would be much easier for us. And the biggest benefit for this was it uh, made the main class for pipeline step extractor much cleaner. Um, so that way uh, we have only have the relevant functions that provide the maximum documentation and not the minimal things on the main class. So this was some code based related changes. And then came the uh, shifting parameter data types change. Uh, what this was about is um, what you can see that um, whenever you visit a parameters uh, documentation, what happens is, for example, let me open the SCM step. Uh, plugin and let us see the checkout step and SCM parameter within that. Um, let me open one of these dropdowns. And as you can see, uh, these types are present in a new line and the branch is there and then you have a type. So there is no help text over here, but still the uh, data type is present on a new line. Um, one more example would could be opening up the git SCM class and seeing the branches example. So here for name, we are not able to see the data type yet, but if we expand it, you'll have to scroll down through the entire help, and then you will find the type sitting somewhere over here uh, at the very end. But now with this new change, you can find these data types in line with your uh, the names of these parameters. For example, let me open the clear case again, and as you can see, the difference is clear. The data type is present in line with these changes. Um, and seeing the git SCM thing for the name, the, the string is present here itself and you need not even expand it in the first place. Uh, you can only expand it if you want to see the help, but it's not required now. So at all levels of hierarchy, these types have been replaced by inline data types. So this uh, ultimately reduced the height of a page, the scrolling height of a page. So if we expand many of these, you can see that the scroll bar height itself the scroll bar size is different on both these pages. So the scrolling length of the new page is much lesser, uh, which in turn reduces the size of the ASCII doc and everything, the loading, loading speed, everything is improved slightly. Okay, um, so this was the this was all, about, all about the parameter data like shifting uh, pull request. Then came uh, the last but not the least uh, task of uh, coding phase one. This was releasing a uh, pipeline metadata utils. So what this uh, does is it provides you a localized plugin manager and a mock Jenkins instance that you can load in your program and which can be used to query plugin manager, different plugins using the plugin manager. So the way we used it in the pipeline step extractor was uh, diagramming the plugins, feeding that into a reactor, that reactor initializes. And once that is done, you can, uh, you can find the components that have the type step descriptor inside a plugin, and you will get a list of these. And from that list, you can generate the documentation that you want. But we realize that this can not only be used for extracting the step help, but other types of things as well. So let us look what, what all it can do. So for example, if you want to use it in a REST API documentation project, uh, we can use this artifact and we can use it the way we want the plugin manager gets initialized 
and then we can query it the way we want. So there are many options available. Uh, we currently only use three of them for pipeline cell extractor, but there are many more because the hyper local plugin manager itself inherits from the main plugin manager objectives. Um, and you can find this artifact uh, on our uh, Jenkins Maven repository. Uh, it is released, and all thanks to Jama, the, uh, the release has been done, and uh, we are able to use that in pipeline cell extractor now. So we have removed the local dependencies and using this published version. So this is, uh, you can find it over here. I've linked it in my presentation. And the th uh, some things that I did under this release process were, first of all, completing the Java code of the uh, hyperlocal plugin manager, mock Jenkins, mock extension list, updating everything uh, with the main class. And then I updated the form of this repository to use the parent form of Jenkins, the non-plugin parent form. And then we moved this to Java 11. It was earlier on Java 8. And then I wrote some tests to see if the green path for hyperlocal plugin manager is working fine or not. So under that, uh, I initialized the plugin manager using the reactor that is used in pipeline to extractor. And from that, I can query my plugin manager uh, for some tests and we can assert those cases to see if the tests are working fine. And finally, uh, we release this uh, as a Maven artifact, which can be used as a dependency by simply uh, copying this down and pasting it in your form. And uh, yes, Jan, and then we this. are running out of time. So you yes. have one more minute to conclude. Sure, sure. So Sorry. Now we are using this in our uh, pipeline set documentation in the repository. So this was all about the changes that I made for uh, till now, mid evaluation. And these are some tasks that we have proposed for coding phase two. So many of them are obtained from the community. And first of all, the task would be to label deprecated plugins on respective steps page that Mark suggested. So that would be the first thing that we'll do. And then we want to separate deprecated steps from the advanced steps. Currently, all the advanced steps, some, some have optional, some are deprecated. And they, it's really very hard to distinguish between them. So that's the thing that we, we would want to do. And then comes a bigger change in which we would want to break down these pages the, with larger information into smaller ones so that we can solve the ultimate issue, which was a proposed in the uh, problem statement. And yes, uh, any more changes about the layout, the, feed, uh, the UI, the documentation, uh, they are welcome. And you can get in touch with us in the docs Twitter channel or the Europe edition of the docs of search, you can find me there. And any feedback is welcome. Um, and these are some links. You can find them on my project page as well. Yes, this was it from my side. Any questions, uh, please let me know. Great. Well well done, Vian. So, and, and sorry to have had to, to rush you uh, at the end. Great, great work. Um, I'm just going to conclude uh, and Q&A can go uh, th uh, through uh, this course or Gitter if there, there are any uh, there. So I just want to, to share the Jenkins upcoming events uh, that we have. So the Jenkins community of Jenkins project will participate to scale, scale conference in Los Angeles uh, end of this month. Mark Waite and Alyssa Tong will be there and probably um, um, Kosuke, the initial writer of uh, Jenkins will attend also and will be present at a booth. The big event that we're going to hold is end of September, DevOps World. Uh, as, as you know, I'm not going to do more uh, explanation what it is because we're completely running out of time and be prepared to hear information and uh, looking for volunteers for this year's edition of Pactoberfest in uh, the Jenkins community. So stay tuned for details. Uh, people on the West Coast may be looking forward to see you at the Jenkins booth in scale and stay tuned for information for the two other uh, events. I think that's it, Elisa. Did I wrap it up? Thank you very much yes. for everybody's attendance. The word is back to you, Elisa. 
Um, thank you to our GSOC contributors. Thank you to our mentors. Um, couldn't have done this program without all of you. So well done. We're out of time. Well done, so yeah. we'll see you next time. Bye-bye, everybody. Thanks, everybody.